Hello, welcome to Spotlight, the rising sun of creativity in the gloom of a winter's evening. Spotlight, brought to you by the Isle of Man Arts Council. This evening, get ready for the Poetry Trail 2024. Family-friendly concerts to engage the musical hearts of young and not so young. And Alan Vannon, reimagined. Remember, do get in touch with any creative artistic endeavours you may be involved in, planning, hoping to create, or would really like to put in the spotlight. Be they poetic, theatrical, musical, literary, ceramic, sculpted, in drag, on film, mime, social media, any of the others, which I always forget. Just email spotlight at manxradio.com or straight to me, Howard Kane, with an E, at manxradio.com. Whatever you choose, do get in touch with your thoughts, ideas, or anything you'd like to feature. So, you might have already enjoyed Stickman Before Christmas, or perhaps We're Going on a Bear Hunt. Performances by Manx Family Concerts, a new group which aims to bring the joy of music and performance to young and old together. It was founded by musicians Heather and Steve Dakin, along with their friend, writer and performer Alex Duncan. Heather dropped by to tell me more, and I asked her how Manx Family Concerts came into being. It came very much out of having our own families, and feeling like there was nothing that we could go to performance-wise for our children to experience live music where they could be children and explore and talk and make noise and move around and really engage with the music without that that parental stress of they must sit still, they must be quiet, all of that, which actually for me as a parent, if I feel that, then as a musician, surely every parent must feel that, and it's quite... It puts you off. What sort of target group are we looking at? So obviously it's children. What sort of age range do you reckon? Um, well, the concerts we've done so far, we've had everything from little tiny babies all the way through to uh, early teens. To a certain extent, because each one at the minute has been based around a book, it'll depend on who engages with that particular book. Um, but as we go on, we've got plans to... Um, do sort of more instrument focused concerts so come and listen to the harp for an afternoon come and listen to the flute for an afternoon whatever it may be which then obviously widens up your audience uh, to a different group of people so each one is, is going to be different now i know um stickman some people might be listening might have got to stickman which was last month and uh, we were going to talk about it we just just the way the world went, we didn't get around to it, unfortunately, in time. Christmas happens. I know, Christmas happens, doesn't it? <laughs> and again, there's another one that just happened this last uh, weekend before uh, we go out t- today on a Wednesday evening. Uh, so what was the last one? What will be what will be coming up in the next in the series? Uh, so we did three performances of Stickman um, immediately before Christmas, and we also took that into one of the island primary schools and did a performance for them at Ashley Hill, which was absolutely brilliant. Um, And then we, by the time this airs, we will have just done three performances of We're Going On a Bear Hunt. Ah, Um, yes, I know that one. (laughs) Indeed. Um, And then coming up in February half term, we are going to be flying through the jungle with the story Giraffes Can't Dance, which might be less familiar to some people. Uh, It's written by Giles Andre, who's behind Rumble in the Jungle, Another one of those books that many parents will have read over and over and over <laughs> again. Um, but it's a it's a brilliant tale that introduces lots of different animals and the idea of dance as well. So we're hoping to weave in some dance activity as well. So, yeah, it's going to be exciting. And how do you actually choose what you're going to do each time as, as it goes along? Is this a, a, a sort of a cooperative effort or are you in charge <laughs> of that? Or uh, I think it's, it's cooperative in that, you know, I... I'm very conscious. I very much come from the world of working in early years education. Um, so the books that I know will not necessarily be the books that everybody knows. Um, and we all have our own individual experiences as families and parents of the favourite that was in our house, the one that you had to read every single day. Um, so it's very much a discussion. Um, we, we're also trying to think about what fits with the time of year sometimes. So Stickman has an obvious link with Christmas, with the stuck man in the chimney. Um, 
bear hunt again has a snowstorm in it so it felt more seasonal for us and also this is the time of year where we all need encouraging to go out on a stomp in the woods (laughs) or we will have suffered going through the mud (laughs) um and giraffes can't dance for a time of the year where we we would all like a bit more heat and sunshine in our world yeah amen to that (laughs) um it is partly based around our ideas uh we're also very much taking on the lead from people who attend the concerts um lots of people have voiced up ideas and said oh you should do this one you should do this one um obviously not every story lends itself to being a concert because the idea is very much alex tells the story and then we're slotting in pieces of music that fit with different aspects of the story so you need something that has plenty of characters or has plenty of different settings or different events that happen through it in order to be able to construct something that makes sense Mm -hmm. so with bear hunt for example the mud there's only one mud song isn't there mud mud exactly (laughs) um and the thinking is very much that you know you've immediately thought of that it should be that every parent comes and goes oh well actually I do know these songs. I I know lots of music myself. But we as parents, a lot of people say to me, they said, oh, I never sing to my children because I think I'm really bad. You're not. Your children will think that your voice is the most amazing thing on earth. So I'm kind of hoping that maybe it breaks down that barrier a little bit and makes people think, you know, the next time I read that story, if something pops into my head, I might just put it on Alexa or I might sing it and share that musical experience with my children. So it's quite quite an interactive experience then so could you for so anyone listening thinking this sounds quite fun but they haven't <laughs> been they haven't been to Stickman, they haven't been to one of the concerts yet could you give us a sort of an idea of what what you might expect because clearly it's a performance but there is a there is this interactivity as well yeah absolutely so the idea is that it is an active engaging experience for everybody that's involved so there are props There are games, there are activities, there are joining in things. Um, Stickman featured a very special performance of the Santa Koki, for example. Um, The idea is that, you know, we know as parents and as teachers that for children, things need to keep moving all the time. And having that constant, oh, what this now? Then you're giving them something to engage with and really enjoy. And actually, as parents, you're encouraging play, which... If you dig into the mental health benefits of that and the family attachment benefits are huge. So So mums and dads, kids all together and they're all sort of learning simultaneously, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. And the thinking behind including familiar music is that it makes it less worrying, isn't it, for people to engage. If it's something that you know already, sort of, then um, joining in with an activity is less frightening. (laughs) That's terrific. Well, it's, it's a great idea, I must admit. Remind us then, coming forward, though, so people again are thinking, right, well, I wouldn't mind just checking out when it's coming. Where can they go to find out more and uh, see which concerts and what's coming up next? Yeah, absolutely. So we are on Facebook under Manx Family Concerts, as uh, so you can visit us there, and that will take you through to the booking page, or you can go to our website, which is manxfamilyconcerts.com. So dead easy to find. Um, As I say, we're very open to uh, doing stuff in schools as well. And um, so if that's something that people want to get in touch with, they're very welcome to. And uh, yeah, share us your ideas as well. Excellent. And and you don't have to be, just put it out there, I suppose, again, and people are thinking, oh gosh, well, I'm not really that musical. You know, I can't really sing or, you know, my child isn't musical. I'm not very musical. That doesn't matter. It's just about experiencing it together. I, I spend a huge amount of my working life talking to people about their preconceived idea of themselves as a musician or as a singer or as a actor we have this this inbuilt thing as a parent of often of thinking oh, well I'm, I'm not very good at that actually this is about us supporting you to give it a go alongside your children who rarely have a fear of anything let's be honest <laughs> Um, And it's worth saying within that, you know, the thinking behind the concerts is that they are also very accessible to um, any families with children with additional needs. Um, As teachers, we work within that realm ourselves and are very used to adapting things. And um, we've been working with a lot of families along the way who've said, oh, it would really help my child if there was this or if there wasn't this. 
and things have been adapted and with bear hunt which will have been last weekend um we've also got angela stewart coming along to sign interpret which is something which you don't tend to see very much on our island currently so we've worked with the manx deaf society to put that in place so that it supports any members of the deaf community but it also will support any families who attend because you're giving that extra level of explanation and understanding to help you engage. What a great idea. And I should say the shows are priced to be as inclusive as possible, being a family outing, so just a fiver for adults, two quid for kids. What's not to like? Spotlight, brought to you by the Isle of Man Arts Council. Now, if you're a regular listener to 1 to 3 with Christy D, and if not, why not, then you might have heard that after the Bee Gees had a go a few years ago, another Manx artist has reinterpreted Alan Vannon. Ex-pat drummer Shane Kerwin told Christy D how it had come about. If you're from the Isle of Man, Ellen Vannon is like the song. Um, and I had this arrangement idea in my head with the tin whistle, but obviously wanted someone to sing it and um, asked Mary Elaine to do it. We've crossed paths, so the way the way music works in New York is there's loads of venues that have a band on every hour on the hour. So you meet a lot of other musicians, and that's how we met. But we never did anything together, so we, we definitely didn't know each other very well but but we ended up knowing so many of the same musicians Um, and I was listening to her sing a set and after that I just said oh I've got this idea for a song do you want to sing it and um, she said sure Uh, we had a rehearsal and booked a studio and and the other two musicians um, I knew already actually the bass player on this uh, song is from Peru and he left New York 10 years ago um, I hadn't really heard from him since and he sent me a text message just saying, yo Shane, I'm in Brooklyn and I think my actual reply was like do you have a bass with you, I've got something I'm trying to record yeah, then he's on it, it was just perfect timing because he's back in Peru now playing in a salsa orchestra So you've got someone from Peru who happened to pop into Brooklyn mm-hmm. at the time you were recording Alan Vanning and you have Mary Lynn, where's she from originally? She's from South Carolina originally yeah, um, who's singing and playing. So they had to learn Ellen Vannon. I presume they'd never heard it before. They'd never heard it before, but it was an easy sell. It's such a beautiful song. You know, I think it was an easy... Uh, I didn't have to do any convincing to to play it. And, um, yeah, I sent out a little demo. And then uh, John Hildenstein, who's playing the harmonium, is someone I've been in loads of bands with. He's an incredible guitarist. And I was like, can you play this wooden box uh, thing? And he did. And I'm playing the tin whistle. somewhat better than the Bee Gees version. Shh. Finally, literary maps at the ready. It's almost poetry trail time again. Your chance to spend a happy hour or two, or indeed just come across randomly. 
publicly displayed works from some of the best poets on the island, and off the island for that matter. Chair of the Isle of Man Poetry Society, Bethany Lee Runciman, and poet Hazel Tear told me more, and Hazel gave me one of her winning poems. The judges had to judge 58 poems written by 28 poets um, and so they whittled it down to the 10 winners we've got um, and these 10 winners uh, on Saturday 3rd of February uh, we have a launch evening at St George's Church. Um, they, the winning poets read out their winning poem um, and they will receive a poster, a copy of the poster uh, as part of their winning prize and um, then um, a week later on the 10th of February the all the 10 poems will be up in the 10 venues and pe- the, the members of the public can then go around and have a look for the poems and um, they're up for a month uh, the, the poems and then um, after then um, I try and get those posters to the winners as well so oh, they have okay. another copy and are the, these all round Douglas? Or? Yeah they're all round Douglas um, I've done in the past I've done Port Aaron and Ramsey I think I've done Peel as well but um, Douglas works very well because it's quite Quite large. Um, uh, one of the problems I had with Peel was the fact that a lot of the houses have very small windows and it was impossible to actually fit a poster into the window. <laughs> and it's a great way to get poetry out, isn't it? It reminds me a little bit of the uh, the poetry on the tube. I remember when I used to be living in London and you'd get the poems on the tube sometimes and you'd just sit there and you think, oh, look at that, and you'd read it. And it's wonderful because an awful lot of people might never think about buying a book of poetry or reading poetry, but if they're out and about doing shopping and they suddenly see something, what's that? And they'll just read it before you know, think, oh, you know, that's that's a nice little thing and it might just trigger something in their mind and make them think about poetry, maybe think about writing a poem themselves. Yeah, it's always good to have poems out in the general public. Um, Our Poetry Society has had them on the buses in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of people, as you say, will never go and buy a poetry book um, or actively go and look for poetry. So I think it's, it's wonderful if people, if they're doing the shopping and just see, oh, there's a, a poster up on WH Smith, what does it say? And, and go and read it. Um, uh, the good thing about the poetry um, competition, that the judges are looking for poems, really, that the, the public um, will enjoy reading. So they either might make people smile or touch a nerve. or um, So we end up with a huge range of all different themes of poems, different styles. Um, I mean, it's... Uh, it's, it's really good to have that so that we're not having a, 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 a 10 venues um, reciting T Brown poems or mm-hmm. something like that so it's a whole and, and the poets themselves um, some of the poets are people who have won before in the past but we always get two or three who actually I've never even heard of before in the past one of our poets actually lives in the Hebrides wow. um, and he's written a, a poem and I don't even know how you pronounce the first <laughs> word <laughs> <laughs> Mo, Mo, Molad, maybe M O L A D H, um, which means in, in praise of Ellen Vanin. So he's written a, pro, a poem about the about the Isle of Man. We we get a few uh, poems about the the theme of the Isle of Man. Um, we have um, a, a poem reflections about a lady looking back at at uh, the Isle of Man as a child. Uh, we have then the um, spirit of man as well um looking at the isle of man so we've got three about the isle of man um we've got um uh, we've got one of the bards michael manning um his poem building great communities which is looking at, about homelessness um we have a poem by um sarah lockyer about slipway um describing um the journey uh, down, of the boat down, down the slipway um we have um, a beautiful poem by john paul butler skin made out of kisses it's absolutely i think this is a gorgeous poem to read um it's it's about loving your partner and kissing them um maybe on the lips on the forehead and getting a whole body sort of made out of kisses i think that's an absolutely wonderful poem um it's it's not too long it's not too short it's it's just just right and he's, he's a brilliant poet to to have. We also have um, another regular winner, Ros Alcock, with Winter's Day. Um, and we have another one, Michael Goodrum, uh, with a um, bombardment of butterflies. Um, Michael does write long poems, so it's, it's good to have a long poem um, because some of the others are quite short. Um, 
And then uh, we have My Sunny Plot, which is written by one of our committee members, Mary Moffat. And it's just an, a lovely, um, it makes you smile because it's about a little sunny garden and the problem you have with weeds. <laughs> um, uh, and yeah, then we, uh, our last poem, our last winner, is um, uh, she's actually the editor of our poetry booklet called Manx Reflections. A committee member, done all sorts of poetry throughout uh, many years on the island. And um, her poem is called Human Race. Yeah. And then Hazel is with us here today. So uh, do, you, do you actually write then, Hazel, I know again you often go in for the poetry trail. And, and, uh, do you write specifically something for the trail or do you look at some of the, the canon of your work and think, oh, this would be a nice piece this year? You... Yes, I tend not to write specifically for anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's whatever arrives at whatever time of day. I had to get out of bed the other night because an idea popped into my head in the middle of the night ah, and it would so not you, let me go back to sleep. Do you keep a little pad on your sort of close uh, by? I had to go and get one in this case <laughs> and I thought, oh no, I've tidied away the pad so I've got to put it back now because I did literally have to go to the living room and find a pad and pen and write it down because I think I'll remember in the morning. And then it's gone. But I'd lost one the other yeah. night and yeah. I thought, oh no. And it's amazing how that happens, isn't it? Yes. Things like that or, or sometimes just at the strangest times little ideas for an opening line or a couple of lines pop into your head yes. and you think, ooh, ooh. And you always think, I remember that. Yeah. Yes, but no, you have you to, never do, you do have you? to nail it down while it's there. <laughs> so, so no, I just fish this one out of my my general sort of uh, stuff. <laughs> if you like, uh, I've got documents sort of mm. all over the place and half finished things, and uh, so for competitions, any competition really, I just fish out something that I think might go down quite well so uh, and we were saying about people uh, uh, enjoying poetry you know particularly with the trail perhaps bringing people into poetry or appreciating poetry who might never have got into it in the first place how, how did you start off was it something therapeutic for you or was it something you know sometimes it's very cathartic for people sometimes they just need a need a way of expressing themselves um i've always done it mm. i've just always written bits and pieces and uh I, I must say, I think I've probably improved over the years. But I've, from a child, I've got a poem that I wrote for my father about the war when I was about nine. Um, and I've just always dabbled with it. And I've spent, I've spent more time, I think, as I've got older, mm. kind of, uh, you know, honing it because I've probably got more time. Um, but, yes, yeah, so, I, you know, so it's something that was in me uh, from, from the word go, really. So. Lovely. Well, you have a poem for us today, one which I you will be able indeed. to believe, see on the trail. So, yes. um, lovely. And we will let hear that now, if we right. can, please. And we have been actually saying how time flies. It does, I'm afraid. I, unfortunately, for we more mature persons, <laughs> time kind of flies it goes, even more. <laughs> it goes. <laughs> right, it's called Human Race. Time is speeding up out of my control. Started as a walk, a manageable stroll. Broke into a trot, took me by surprise. I was getting old right before my eyes. Rattling along, picking up more speed, try to slow it down, but it pays no heed. Like a bolting horse, time has got away, dragging on the reins, nerves in disarray. Time uses the whip, makes the hours go faster. If I stay on board, there will be disaster. At alarming speed, something is amiss, at full gallop now towards the abyss. There's no turning back. Soon I will be thrown right out of the race into the unknown. Always a great event. Sadly, I'm going to miss it this year. But make sure you don't. 10th of February for four weeks, the trail's available. And trail guides you can pick up from Douglas Library or the Museum Library. If you want to know more about the Poetry Society, email poetry at manxcat.org.uk. That's about it for this week. Don't forget, if you want to hear anything again, go to manxradio.com, download the Spotlight podcast, listen where and when you want. Why not try it whilst working out how much money you haven't got following Christmas? See you next week. Until then, look after yourselves, and whatever you're doing, be creative about it. Cheerio. Cheerio.